The hobby positivity crowd might want to turn off this video right now. We're not blocking out the negativity here. We're diving headfirst into it. We have a sports card influencer who is being accused of show bidding, but it's what he's done after being caught that has the hobby on high alert. Speaking of show bidding, Jeff Wilson made a comment defending a seller often accused of show bidding. Does Jeff need a hobby history lesson? And a new website is out that shows just how overpriced the breaks at companies like Backyard Breaks and Card Collector 2 are. Who are the cheapest and most overpriced breakers? We will examine. No gatekeepers here, guys. Everyone is invited to watch this edition of Sports Card Radio. I'm Rob Gerard, your sports card therapist, and welcome to my channel. I just wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about the hobby and the importance of blocking out the negativity in the hobby. We need to form a tight-knit iron circle around this where we can be the gatekeepers. Today I'm going to talk about something that's been on my mind recently, something that's bothering me. No show intro today, no fancy graphics, just a conversation about the negativity and drama that has plagued the sports card hobby in the last few months. And it's not good. It's not good and it has the potential in the long run to really harm the hobby. It is not what the hobby should be about. When you're consuming content, when you're consuming content, I think it's really easy to get caught up in the negativity and the drama. The content you've been producing to your viewers, I, if any of you view their videos and you enjoy that, all I'm going to tell you is that's not content. So a new website has emerged that breaks down what group breakers are charging compared to others. This graphic shows that Backyard Breaks was charging three to $4,000 more compared to their competitors for a Topps Definitive 3-box break. For a gold standard football break, only one other breaker was more expensive than Backyard. That is a Tesla! Backyard weren't the only ones who were regularly priced above their competitors. Hobby Gold and Boy Card Collector 2 ranked 17th out of 18th breakers for this Panini Origins break. Will the new data change the way breaks are priced? Only time will tell. Check the link in the description for the website in case you want to see where your hobby heroes rank. And if you bought the cards of my number one guy, Ryan Finley, I told you, I told you that he was going to have the opportunity to start sometime this season. And guess what? He will be starting the next game for Cincinnati. Andy Dalton's going to be on the bench and it's going to be Ryan Finley time. And I think it's a pretty good time for it to be Ryan Finley time. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Perobstein is out with a new video defending himself against allegations that his consignment auctions are manipulated and pumped up by fake bids. And when one good old boy runs to the camera to defend himself, others typically fall in line behind him. Hobby hero Jeff Wilson left a comment on the video that read, anyone who understands business also understands you wouldn't pump up auctions to get an extra few bucks here and there, as that would be putting $100 million of sales at risk. The baseless accusations never made any sense. PPP loans fraudulently. Two points that I'd like to make. When people accuse Probstein auctions of being pumped up, they don't necessarily mean that Rick and his employees are in the back room placing the bids. The eBay platform is an easy place to place false bids on items that you have no intention of paying for. When guys like Jeff come to slurp the nutsack of Probstein, they're missing the bigger picture that the platform Probstein sells on is rife with fraud. Even Probstein would have to admit that a certain percentage of his auctions have illegitimate bids placed on them. Second point, let's take Jeff's statement at face value that it would be crazy for an auction house owner to place bids on his own consignment listings. Jeff, hello, Jeff. Two of the largest auction houses ever have been busted for this exact same thing. Bill Mastro went to prison for show bidding. Brent and my girl Betsy got kicked off eBay for, wait for it, show bidding. So Jeff, when you say anyone who understands business knows that an auction house wouldn't jeopardize their business by pumping their own auctions, Jeff, history tells us that's exactly what has happened in this industry we have to keep out the bad people that are going to take advantage of other people in the hobby and create what i call a very high standard of conduct 
within the hobby that we hold each other accountable to. And that will help weed out all the bad actors. Okay, it's time for one of the weirdest stories of the year. A sports card influencer who went by the name Sports Card Therapist was caught not paying for a couple Eli Manning cards that he won on eBay. But it's what he's done since that raises even more speculation. I'll post a link to three other videos that came out a couple days ago that touch on this wild story. A live stream done by Because I'm Carlos on Friday, a video by AIH Sports, and a video by Dan the Card Man. So the story goes, this Eli Manning 2013 Gold Prism card was listed on eBay, and it ended up with a collector that goes by Modest Card Collection. But it's an interesting story how he was able to obtain it. Modest Card Collection was the second high bid on this card. And a few days after losing the auction, he inquired with the seller to see if it had been paid for yet. Lucky for him, the card had not been paid for, and the seller offered the card to Modest Card Collection. They purchased the card and posted it on their Instagram here. The post did receive a comment from none other than the sports card therapist who remarked, congrats, me and a handful of others were also bidding on this one. Perhaps spurred by the comment, a modest card collection wasn't done with his investigation into the bidding of the card. He felt like some hanky panky was going on with the bids. Hanky panky. So modest card collection messaged the seller on eBay again to see if he could get the name of the person who originally won the Eli Manning card but didn't pay. The seller revealed that an eBay account belonging to Sports Card Therapist originally won the card. So, Sports Card Therapist won this card and never paid, and apparently a second Eli Manning card was also not paid for. When confronted with this information, Sports Card Therapist posted a nine-minute rambling video where he basically admitted to not paying for the cards, but he since deleted that post. He deleted his Instagram. He deleted all his YouTube videos. He deleted his podcast. Is this the advice a therapist would give to somebody in a similar situation? Seems like he maybe got overextended and maybe got carried away on some bids and couldn't pay. While not a great look, it's not the end of the world. He could apologize and move on. Why delete all your social media accounts and videos? Why delete your eBay account? Makes it seem like there is much more to the story. I tried reaching out to sports card therapist, but these positivity guys are harder to get a hold of than Betsy's phone number. If you just made a mistake getting overextended when bidding on stuff, own up to it and move on. Why delete everything? The last thing this hobby needs is less content and less voices. I mean, who else could get the great creator and Jeff in one collab? Within so when hobby, you say these people, you yeah. mean like trolls, trolls. hobby watchdogs? Like, uh, like They call themselves hobby watchdogs. I think they're mm -hmm. trolls. I think they're, you know. If I'm going to be honest, I think their content is all trash. But what do you guys think about the sports card therapist? Should he be banned from the hobby or with some therapy? Should he be allowed to come back? Maybe somebody from his wolf pack can find him and get some answers. As you know, with me, it's uh, it's all about the vibes. Market movers just hit another all time low. Even the most positive influencers seem to be feeling the loss of steam in the industry at large. I've certainly narrowed down the things I'm willing to buy. I'm only buying stuff of players I really like or are really unique items. Here are a few things that I've bought and actually paid for recently. Bought 10 1987 Fleer, Fleer factory sets. That's right, Fleer guys. Fleer for $22 each. I think I can make $8 each. Bought a Joe Montana autograph for $55. Would take these all day. Bought an Andy Warhol poster that hung in Wolfgang Puck's restaurant for $554. Love that. Bought a jacket worn by Mbappe and some shorts worn by Messi for 500 bucks. Bought a Matt Cain signed San Francisco Giants jersey for 118 bucks. Take that all day. Bought a Ted Williams signed Sports Illustrated magazine for 120. And I bought this Kobe Bryant card for 1973 about a month ago. What have you bought lately and actually paid for? Let me know in the comments and we will see you next time right here on Sports Card Radio. Fleer!